Now the collection of everything. Oh. Hey guys, so today we're gonna talk about functions. What exactly is a function? Well, a function is simply a process in which we take an input, we do something to it, and then it spits out an output. So let's take a look at this function machine here. Now in this function machine, notice that we have an input and we have an output. So into the input, I'm gonna, in this case, put in a green apple. And let's see what happens to it, okay? So we put in this green apple, and from the output, we get a red apple. We put in an apple, and it seems to just given us a different type of apple. Okay, well, what happens if we put in something else that's not an apple? What if we put in a blue square? Okay, so blue square into our function, and out pops a red square. Okay, so it seems like this function machine seems to be just painting everything red. All right, let's try it with one more thing. So what happens if we take a little tiny house and we put that into our function machine? And our function machine does its work and out pops a red tiny house. Okay, now it seems pretty certain that this function machine is just painting everything red, right? And that's the thing. This function machine does the same job. And that's what's important. That's the one rule about the function is that it keeps doing the same thing over and over and over again. Now we have a couple bits of terminology that we have to go over. Now, anything that I'm allowed to put into the function machine is called a domain. And anything that's gonna come out of our function machine is called our range. So in this case, what is the range of this function machine that's turning everything red? Have you guys decided? Well, the range in this case should be anything and everything that's the color red. Because we should expect to get anything red, but only red items. Right? We're not going to get anything blue. So our blue items are not part of our range. So what's our domain? So then what that asks is, what am I allowed to plug into this function machine? Well, it seems like pretty much anything because so far we've put in squares, we've put in fruits, we've put in a house for goodness sakes. It doesn't really seem like there's any restriction on our input. So in this case, we would say our domain is all real values or all real items. Now in math, of course, we're gonna talk about numbers, so the math correlation would be all real numbers, right? So let's see what happens if we do a few other things to this function. Now we know it's gonna paint things red, right? So what happens if I plug in a green apple again? Are we gonna get the same red apple? And the answer is yes. In fact, we have to. Remember, the function has to be predictable. It took whatever we put in and gave us the red version of it. So if we put in the same green apple that we did before, we should get the same red apple as our output. And we could test this and we could put in our green apple again and we do see that we get the same red apple. Perfect, our function machine is working. So what happens if we put in the red apple? Well, let's try. So we plug in the red apple and it gives us a red apple. And that was fine. We should have expected that. Remember, this should be predictable. So we said our domain was anything and it could be red items. But notice that we don't get a green apple. If we take an item that wasn't output, do not expect to go backwards to get your input. Meaning, if I put in a red apple, don't expect that you get a green apple. The function still has to do what it's going to do, which in this case was paint things red. So let's take a look at a different function machine. This time, let's deal with numbers. So I'm gonna tell you that our domain is numbers, any number. So at first, I'm gonna plug in the number three, and out of the output comes the number six. Next, I'm gonna try plugging in the number 10. And when I do that, out pops the number 20. So what is our function doing? It seems like we're just doubling each of these numbers. So our function is considered that it's two times our input. So how do we write this? Well, our function notation says, our function in this case, let's call this function f. Our function with our input of x simply multiplies our input by two. So this is written as f of x is equal to 2x. And what that says is our function is called a function f, our input is something x. And whatever input we put in, it's going to multiply it by two. So what does it mean if I wrote f of negative seven? Well, it says, all right, into my function f, which again is this function that doubles the number, I'm gonna plug in negative seven. 
Well, what should I get out if I'm going to plug in negative 7? Well, the function doubles the number, so double negative 7 is negative 14. This is how we write and solve functions. So another way to express the same notation, instead of saying f of negative 7 is equal to 14, is I could write this as an x and y value. Now, typically, our x values are our inputs, and our y values are our outputs. So instead of writing this as f of negative 7 is equal to negative 14, I could also write this as an ordered pair. And an ordered pair would just write x comma y, so in this case, negative 7 comma negative 14. This all means the same thing. For any given input, we get a very specific output. For any particular x, we get a very specific y. This is our function. So what about this function g of x is equal to x squared plus 3? What does this mean? Well, this says our function g, and that's what it's called, it's just function g, has an input of x, and when we input this x, we're going to square it, then add 3. So let's say I want to find g of 2. Well, it says I'm going to square 2, then add 3. So I get 2 squared, which is 4, plus 3 is equal to 7. So g of 2 is equal to 7. It also means that an ordered pair, 2 comma 7, exists as part of this function. So for more information about functions, click on the link above, and I'll talk about one-to-one -one functions, vertical line test, and the inverse functions. I'll see you guys next time.